Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India The second feature is number of engines. Now, number of engines, who will decide the number of engines on the airship? No, no, I am not talking about the type of the engine, I am talking about the number of engines. Whether you will have one engine or two engine or ten engines, who will decide that? No, a designer, if you leave the designer a choice, he will always say one engine. But the regulatory bodies might come into picture like they come into picture for even aircraft design and they might say sorry more than so many passengers you must have two minimum two okay so typically passenger carrying airships have at least two engines for reliability point of view if one fails there is a second one available it will be disastrous to have a passenger carrying airship with single engine and for some reason the engine fails then it will be very difficult to bring them down. It will be unsafe. So minimum two, but then somebody might say, no, why two, why not three, four, five, six? So what decides that? So more than two is what regulatory bodies tell you, but they don't say you should have seven or six or five. So what would you do as a designer? If they say not less than 2, will you limit it to 2 or will you go for 3? So based on the specification is specified, like they will decide, so we don't waste any way to within 2 I can achieve this. Correct. If I can manage to meet all requirements within 2, I will not put a third one. But suppose my requirements are so stringent or so large that I am not able to get the required cruise speed with only two engines. You may have to have a third engine. This does not normally happen in airships because they are not supposed to fly very fast. The power consumption increases rapidly with the size and with velocity it is V cube effect. So if someone gives you a requirement of a Mach 0.9 airship, then the requirement is flawed. Okay. If you put a very big engine or a more powerful engine, it will, it will also create more drag. You will not be able to overcome. So in airship design, generally we never see a third engine except when that third engine is meant for something else. What could that be? For someone said powered lift. What is that? Yeah, yeah, but look, I will have a separate discussion on hybrid airships. Right now, this methodology is only and only for conventional airships. So, please don't bring in complicated airship geometries right now. <coughs> right now, it's simple conventional airship, single envelope, axisymmetric body. Okay. So, therefore, we will not look at those considerations. So, then why would there be a third engine, if at all? for augmenting the yaw power and providing additional yaw control. How will third engine help? Where will you put it? If you have three engines, where will you put it? The third one, I mean. In the rear part. Why in the rear part? Why not the front part? There might be more momentum in putting in the front. You do not know. That depends on where the other things are located. So, you can put it in the bow or in the stern. Both options have been tried by people. Okay. But if you put it in the front, the problem is then where do you attach the mast? The front of the airship is kind of reserved for ground attachment. Kind of. But there have been experiments with uh, engines in the front to give direct side force. Also, 
an engine in the front might also spoil the aerodynamics of the airship because it will be a large draggy body attached to the front portion. Most airships have an engine, third engine at the rear because there is this fin available to mount it. In some cases, the fins are not load carrying, they are not that, they are not that uh, load carrying, they are flimsy. So, directly on the envelope. So, one very good experiment that was done is, uh, I can remember two of them. One was done by a, a German uh, airship made by researchers and students called as Lotte, L-O-T-T-E, in which there was a third engine mounted on the back directly on the envelope. Similarly, we have seen in our videos the Zeppelin NT airship which has got a third engine on the back which can also swivel. So, in normal takeoff and landing mode, I think uh, in the normal takeoff mode, it is actually giving thrust. But when you want to counter side winds or other forces, it can give you side force also by tilting it. So, it is important everyone should study about the third engine on Zeppelin NT and explain to us how it works on the modal page. So, this is the second modal request. I can only say request because it is up to you to put it or not. Okay. Some of you will do it because there are 10 percent marks for it. Some of you will do it because you are enjoying the course and you want us and yourself to learn more. Remember when you put something on modal, everybody learns. I also learn. Right. So, number of engines could be 2 or 3, never more than that. There are some airships which are having 4 engines because they want to get rid of the fin. So, we are also making one such airship in Brazil or in association with people in Brazil where there will be 2 in the front, 2 on the back on the gondola. So, on the gondola we are putting 2 horizontal rods and mounting 4 engines and then we are saying by controlling these 4 engines and their thrust vectoring, we can fly the airship without the fins. So, a finless airship. Now, one researcher from Canada, McGill University, there is one uh, professor Nahon, he has supervised a student for making a finless airship with four, with four engines. So, I will upload on Moodle page the paper written by the student about the finless airship. Okay, the next important parameter which the designer has to decide, not the user, is the envelope L by D ratio, length to diameter ratio, not lift by drag ratio, but length to diameter ratio. So, now let us see from basic aerodynamic principles, do we have any information on what should be a good length to diameter ratio for a subsonic body of revolution? How much should be the L by D? 10, around, 10. around 10 is true for low speed aircraft. That is what we use in fuselage design, 10, 11, 12. Okay. But if you make an inflatable body of revolution with L by D equal to 10, the first problem you will encounter is for a given volume, you will have large surface area. What is the problem with that? weight of the envelope will go up. Okay. Yes, more surface area means more possibility of leakage, agreed, because there will be more joints, longer joint lengths, more fabric, therefore more leakage. Then there will be higher drag. Remember, we are going at low speeds. You will have skin friction drag and that will become large if you have larger skin. So, in airships, it has been shown that the best L by D is of the order of 4.5 to 5. Okay. So, never we see airships with L by D far, far more than this number. There are exceptions. For example, there are some airships like Zeppelin NT, which has got a very large L by D ratio. That is driven by requirements like, see, a Zeppelin NT is a semi-rigid airship. So, there the weight of the structure inside is more important than the fabric fabric there is basically meant for only giving a covering to the structure and to the gas bags inside. So, when we look at conventional non-rigid airships, and I must clarify that this methodology is also limited to only non-rigid airships. 
So, for conventional non rigid airships, L by D max length to diameter max is 5, 4 and a half. Okay. Then, balloon volume for trim. I hope you will recall we had a discussion on this also and we also had a question in your examination about how the balloon can be used for providing trim. What is trim? Yes, what is trim? When is an airship or an aircraft set to be in a trimmed condition? When the net moment acting on it is 0. So, it maintains its position and flies, right. Because if there is unbalanced moment, it will respond to that moment and change its orientation, correct. So, let us say the airship is now trimmed at an angle of 3 degrees, angle of attack of 3 degrees, flying at 3 degree angle of attack. For some reason, maybe I feel that at 3 degree angle of attack, there is going to be very high drag, it is a high speed flight, okay. Airship do not fly very fast, but when they fly at near their maximum speed, they are actually flying at their fastest, almost the fastest. So, at that speed you will have large amount of drag. So, let us say the pilot wants to fly in such a way that the airship is trimmed at 1 degree, not 3.5 or 4 degrees. So, what can the pilot do? How will you change? the angle at which the airship gets trimmed yeah one of them is cg control that is tough that is very tough because having a facility to move the mass yeah inside you might say okay the gondola has got two fuel tanks one in the front and one in the back or there are two tanks carrying the last of water and you pump but it's complicated any other simpler way? Correct. You have you have two balloons, and you can see you want a particular amount of air in the balloon to take care of the operating condition. But you could get that from only the rear balloon, only the front balloon, or a mixture of both. So by adjusting. Now the question is that in a way the balloon a volume that you carry is like subtracting from the volume available for the envelope. So, what factor or what operating requirement directly decides the balloon a volume with respect to the envelope volume or the inflation fraction? Delta H, delta H not H, very important, is delta H from which height you want to go to which height that is important. So, if you are given some delta H from operating requirements you will have to have let us say 30 percent balloon A you have to take because delta H requires it. Now, you have will you want to put additional balloon A for trim control because 30 percent will be consumed in maintaining delta H requirement. But let us say at the maximum altitude or the pressure altitude when balloon A is flush, now you cannot use it for any trimming. So, I would like to have some margin in the balloon A for pure trimming purposes. So, should that be 10 percent, 2 percent, 5 percent, how will you find it? So, this question was in front of us that fine we can calculate the balloon A volume required or the inflation fraction needed from operating requirements by using the aerostatic formulae. But how much extra to give so that we can have sufficient reserve balloon A volume for trimming purposes? How would you how would you go ahead if you are given this problem? So, how much is sufficient? Is it 5 percent? Is it 10 percent? Is it 1 percent? So, Pratik, what would you do if you are designing an airship and you are facing this problem? Okay, let me put the problem in some other way. Okay. Every month, a student in IIT Bombay incurs some expenditure 
in accommodation, food, mobile, travel, blah, 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 blah. There is some number, okay. But you have to keep slightly more than that for some emergency. How do you decide this number? Let us say you have landed up in IIT Bombay and you want to know what should be the monthly amount of money in my bank account so that I can take care of my expenses. So, somebody will say no problem, mess bill is, I mean accommodation is 11 rupees per month, mess bill is roughly so much, this is roughly so much, etc., etc., and then what do you do? Tell me, what do you do exactly? So, you ask the seniors, right? You ask the hostel mates. How much do you spend in canteen? Typically, so much. How much on mobile? Oh, do not worry, network is available here and there. Once in a while, you need on the phone. So, you can take a 1 GB pack. You know, like that, somebody will advise you. Similarly, we did the same thing. We looked at the data of existing airships. How much trim volume are they keeping? And we said, first thing is we should know how much they are keeping so that we do not keep less than that. And secondly, we said, let us see if you keep more than that, what is the effect? So that we know, oh, we can't go more than what we keep because it affects a lot. This is what is empirical. Nothing wrong in this. Many people have a wrong notion that, oh, empirical means uh, not non-technical, empirical means uh, all angutha chap type things. It is not true. In fact, doing analytical calculations is very easy, no, no brainer because somebody gives you a method and you just punch those numbers and get some answer. That is very easy, that I think many people can do, okay. The most challenging thing is to be able to get this kind of a feel of real life situation in design by learning from other people's experience, learning from what has been done, not blindly following it. Suppose SFC of a typical engine is so much, I do not say SFC is so much. I would say today's number is so much. Ten years later, intelligently I have to find a way of predicting what will be the reduction in the SFC. We all do it, right? All of you, I mean, Sandeep has designed an aircraft and flown it. He never knew in the beginning what it would weigh. But he knew that typical UAVs are of this weight class. So now when he talks about it to other junior students, you can make out that that experience has come. Ah, you should do this, you should not do this. No one taught him unless he did it. So similarly, the designers who learn about uh, things, they learn it only by experience, only by doing the calculations. Okay. So, balloon volume for trim, we decided this number as I said based on data of existing airships and a sensitivity analysis using equations on how much is the payload loss because of providing larger balloon trim. The next point is internal overpressure. We all know that the pressure inside has to be kept more than the pressure outside, otherwise it will cave inside. But how much more? So that depends on many things. It depends actually on three things. It depends on how much dynamic pressure you are expected to encounter during flight. So if you are told at this speed, at this altitude, just calculate half rho e square, that will be acting on it. And it should be, pressure inside should be atmospheric plus more than that that much more than that so that it does not cave inside. But then there are other things. In a very large airship, even the pressure will be different at the bottom of the envelope and top of the envelope because of the weight of the gas acting on the bottom. So when we look at stress analysis, that will be a chapter in one of our studies. We will look at these three factors. What we did is, we are starting the design. We do not have all these data. So we took an internal overpressure based on the information available about other airships. So, the configuration parameters are some things that the designer assumes either based on experience or based on, okay, we will try cross spin 
and then C plus fin and then take the best of the two. The performance requirements are given by the user and also the operation parameters. <laughs>